Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to answer a question I've been getting quite a bit recently, which is, is program XYZ a good financial engineering program, or is it a good you know, risk management program? Basically, is this quantitative finance, mathematical finance, whatever the program title is, is it a good program? So first off, I'm gonna say there's not necessarily good programs and bad programs. However, in my mind, I do divide them like that. Uh, the reason I say this is what your goal is is going to be different from what my goal is, and having different goals will determine which program is better for you. And so the goal that you need to ask yourself is why are you more or less going to get this degree? Are you going to get this degree because you just want a job? Uh, if so, do you want to get a job more or less aligned with finance? Or do you want a job that is more aligned with doing quantitative analysis, uh, doing research, and things that are very heavy mathematically? So there are two types of programs in my opinion. There are engineering programs, which are programs that are mainly held through engineering schools and math departments as well. And there are programs that are held through business schools. These are two different types of programs and they are not equal. So looking at your goals, you need to think about what do you really want to do? Um, the word quant now, as I use all the time, I like to think of it in the purest form as somebody who's like a true academic and practitioner, somebody who loves learning, and somebody who wants to be an expert in many, many fields within mathematics, finance, computer science, and put all these together in one big package. Uh, true quants are extremely rare. Just because you have a degree it means absolutely nothing in my opinion. You need to be a quant who eats, sleeps, and breathes what they do for a living. And so there are different goals that you're going to be looking at when you're selecting a financial engineering program. Uh, some people want to be like pure quants. They want to eat, sleep, and breathe heavy amounts of mathematics and finance. However, some people want to do more of derivative products, but they want to do more of the business side of it. Or they want to do more of the risk management slash business side of it, which is a lot different than a hardcore financial engineering program. So I feel there are really three things you need to consider when selecting a quant program or financial engineering program. And those three things are more or less the career path that you desire or your goal that you're working towards, the job placement rate of the program itself, and schools that actually accept you. So there are a ton of programs out there now uh, for example, I applied to, I think, like 15, 20 programs. It costs a lot of money to apply to these. However, I got accepted to two programs. I was accepted to the University of Michigan and I was accepted to Claremont. And so in reality, it doesn't really matter what other programs are out there. What really determines this last point is which programs accept you and how to select between these different programs. I do encourage all of you to apply to many programs as these programs are very competitive. Uh, these aren't as easy as getting into like an MBA program as there are hundreds of MBA programs and they accept hundreds of students. I know some programs accept like 800 students at these MBA programs, which is a huge joke in my opinion. Um, it doesn't make it very uh, rare. It doesn't make it very valuable. And if that many students get in and can pass and do really well, it says something about your program. The rigor is not very high. So let me just define what a quant is before we get going. So in my opinion, a true quant is somebody who can solve new problems using math, statistics, computer science, and finance. So if you are one of those people that loves to go to school and just memorize the equations and you can like regurgitate them, uh, you're probably not a quant, even if you have a financial engineering degree or a mathematical finance degree. The reason I say this is you're not solving problems. You can't manipulate the formulas that you learned with theory to create something new. That's what defines a quant is somebody who can solve complex problems that are new solutions to new problems. And again, I'll drive it home as I do in all my videos. A quant is not somebody who goes out and gets a degree. It's not somebody who has a specific degree. Um, it's not even somebody who does a specific task for a living. But in my opinion, a quant is somebody who is always striving to learn to be better, to learn more mathematics, more statistics, more computer science. They're always thirsty to keep learning. And again, in my opinion, a quant is not something you achieve. It's a process. Like I am a quant because I'm continually in this process of learning. And I do a lot of learning that is quantitative and is focused around computational finance and the finance industry in general. So let me compare more or less the two types of programs as I mentioned at the beginning. There are engineering types programs and there are business types programs. Um, in my opinion, uh, someone who's hiring for something that's truly quantitative, I would prefer to get students who are from engineering programs and not business programs. The reason I say this is because what I do for a living is fairly technical. I do risk management at a bank. Um, also, if you're doing something that's like engineering financial products, like derivative products, 
I need somebody who's not going to memorize simple formulas, but as someone who is going to do very complex adjustments to those formulas. And a great example is the Black-Scholes model. Um, it is an amazing model. Uh, as Emmanuel Dermans pointed out in many of his writings, the Black-Scholes model is great because it doesn't sweep dirt under the rug and pretend that there are not assumptions behind the model. It explicitly states the assumptions behind the model so you know exactly how to use it. It's a closed form solution, which is amazing. It's simple, you can just plug stuff in and get results. However, when you're in like a prop trading situation or when you're building other types of models that rely on this theory, you have to be able to tweak the model. So let me just give you an example of why a business program is different from an engineering program. So I hope you can see this, but this is the Black-Scholes model, what you'd be taught in a business program. Uh, it's quite simple, this is for our call option. This is exactly what they would teach you. You'd learn all the theory, which is great. And you do need to take classes in business side that understand how to use these options quite well, uh, how to use them in practice, and how to use these maybe in a corporate finance setting or an investment setting. However, this is what business types of people think the Black Shoals is. If you look on this side, I'll try to show you a little more detail. This is actually the derivation of the Black Shoals Somewhat simplified, and you can see here that the Black-Scholes equation is probably significantly different than you have seen it if you're a business student. Um, again, this is just derivation that is from the Black-Scholes, and I will throw a link up here to a video that I actually like. Um, and I'll put descriptions in the links below. There's two videos I've seen, one that has like a business perspective and one that has an engineering and math perspective. And again, the reason that you know this derivation is nice and pretty and it's great to understand this, but it's a business kind of concept, is that this is just applied for like general applications, something you could easily automate. However, when you look at this one, this is for somebody who's going to be like a quantitative trader, high frequency trading, someone who's gonna work in serious quantitative finance. They have to be able to look at all these different assumptions. And again, you'll see in parts of this, for example, uh, here's Ito's lemma, which is used and Edo's Lemma is great, but you have to understand Edo's Lemma and be able to apply it. So there's a whole bunch of theory that you need to learn behind this before you just apply these. And again, this is the difference between an engineering degree and a business quant or finance engineer, financial engineering degree. Again, a business degree is not bad, an engineering degree is not good, they're just used in different scenarios. And so for me, as someone who's a financial engineer or a quant, someone who focuses more on the computational side of finance, um, learning the engineering side is important to me. And so goal-wise, you have to look at what your goal is. If you wanna be like a high-end super quant and you wanna be doing high-frequency trading, you wanna build com competing models to the Black Shoals that are adjusted, for example, you need to be able to do the engineering financial engineering programs. These are going to be the best fit for you. The people that typically fit these programs best already have a statistics, mathematics, or computer science background. On the other side, if you want to go into something that's more along the lines of like business strategy, um, using derivative products to reduce risk, uh, going in for a financial engineering or quant degree on a business school is going to be useful. However, the jobs you're going to be looking at are something more along the lines of wealth management. You're not going to be going into a company like Citadel, for example, or Two Sigmas and be trading and doing all kinds of crazy models and working quantitative research. You're going to be doing wealth management, looking at purchasing derivative products, and learning how to reduce risk within an investment strategy. So these are two different perspectives. Again, one's not good, one's not bad. So now just my opinion on this, better schools are typically, again, heavy in math, computer science, and statistics, and they do teach you finance. You do need to take business classes to understand how these are applied. So looking through the curriculum and different courses that are available through the different programs, these courses should be at the master's or PhD level. You should not be taking undergraduate math classes as part of your curriculum. Um, your math classes should not be part of a business school. They should be part of a math or engineering department or a computer science department if you're taking computer programming. And again, in my opinion, I think programs that are a year and a half or longer are better programs. So the reason I say that you should learn at least a year and a half or longer is that there's so much information out there that you need to know, it's impossible to learn it even in like two years. So these are really like crash course, you're diving in hard. Um, in my opinion, again, a lot of this is like PhD level material, but you're learning it at a master's level and you're doing it in a short, very quick amount of time. 
Um, these programs aren't made to be like the end all be all. Like I said, if you learn this and you get a degree, you're not a quant. Uh, you need to go out and keep learning. It takes years and years and years to cover everything in great depth, to understand everything really well, and be able to apply this in a work and industrial setting. So on the flip side, how do you spot programs that aren't necessarily the strongest quantitative programs? Well, you look at the amount of business classes. I've seen programs that are like two thirds or more business classes. And that's great if you wanna go out there and do kind of like quantitative stuff, but it's really a quantitative business degree. It's not a quantitative financial mathematics degree or a financial engineering degree. And so don't be fooled by a lot of these programs that are kind of sugarcoating a business degree and adding a little bit of math and pretending it's a quant degree. The other thing that makes bad programs, in my opinion, is looking at the job placement. So for many of you, the whole reason of getting this degree is to make more money and to get a new job in a new industry. And so you're out there trying to get this degree to promote yourself and make yourself better. Even programs that are very, very good and have great teachers, great professors, great curriculums, if they have low job placement rate, that's gonna be a struggle for you. That's gonna be something you need to consider. And so in general, don't take my opinion on all this as like the end all be all of quant programs or how people actually do hiring. Um, I would encourage you to actually go over to quantnet.com. And again, I'll put a link below, but quantnet.com does a great job at actually ranking the programs and at least the programs that participate in their ranking surveys. And just to kind of wrap up this whole video on how to select a great program, um, the greatest program for me might not be the greatest program for you. And so I would look at your academic background as well. If you have a business background, you should probably focus on something that's more business related. Um, I did struggle a lot in the financial engineering program that was in an engineering school with a business background. However, if you really wanna become a quant, I think this is the best way to go. If you have a business background, however, you wanna kinda of have like a little bit of an edge over other business students and be considered more quantitative, I would consider going to a program that is business ran and through a business school. Again, it's gonna align better with your background. They understand what your background is. They teach it from your perspective and it'll be easier to learn um, different points and different information that's taught through the program. Again, the information taught in each program, an engineering program versus a business program, it's not the same. It's different and the applications are different. And again, these business programs are great and amazing if you're going to specific fields such as wealth management, uh, perhaps working at a commercial bank, doing something that's not super technical, but also having that business edge. You have an advantage because you have a business background. On the other hand, if you wanna do something that's very technical, very engineering related, I would recommend the engineering backgrounds or computer science backgrounds. And that being said, some of you have a computer science background, you're wanting to get into this. Look for programs who really push the computer science side. Um, one example is Baruch, but that's kind of my thoughts and opinions on the whole scenario of which program is best. Uh, if you're asking about international schools and they're not listed in this QuantNet website, I would just look at what I talked about. Look at the materials, look at the curriculum, and start comparing the curriculums across different programs. So even if it's in a business school, compare it to an engineering school, see what they are and aren't covering. Try to get like a class description, try to get the topics. And also, if you look up here, I'm gonna have a link to the what I consider the core quant knowledge. Again, this is very flexible, very fluid. This is my opinion. This will change over time. However, that should give you an idea of what you should be expected to learn in a quantitative program. You might also consider looking at my other video, which I'll throw a link up here to, which is why you're not a quant. This will give you kind of a justification of the bad trend that's going on now, where tons of schools are opening programs that claim to be financial engineering programs or computational mathematics programs but they're not really programs. And again, the best way to kind of review these programs is to look at quantnet.com if your program is on there. If not, and for even programs that are on there, I would consider looking at all the curriculum that they provide. Is it really, really quantitative material? Does it line up with kind of the base quant material that I listed in the video um, up here? Or is it more or less a generalized kind of program that's really an MBA disguised as a finance program, or is it just a really generalized program that university is doing to make money on? Those are things you need to consider when looking at these programs because at the end of the day, the university does not have your best interest at heart. Um, they're out there to make money. And so you need to actually be weary of that. You need to look at the best programs and then select the best programs based off of the schools you get into. So that's it guys. That's the answer to how to select a financial engineering or a quant program in my opinion. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the subscribe button below. And as always, until next time. 
Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.